Hello, this is William DeMitt Johnson. Today we will look at player types. What sort of players are there? What sort of players do you encounter when you sit behind your GM screen or across the table from these lunatics who have invaded your house and expect to be entertained and to entertain you for a few hours? And how do you change them or evolve them? The first type is the escapist. This player is there to get away from all the boring mundane life. They have a normal life where normal things happen. They get up, they go to work, they do their work, they come home, they sleep, and rinse and repeat over and over again. What this player wants in their game is the fantastic. They want the amazing, they want the different, they want the unusual. And in most games, this is reasonably easy to present. I mean, there are strange monsters, mutant cannibals, green scene slaves, and mad robots. And you should put them in. Because that is what these games want. They want the world to be a weird polymorphic landscape that is different from the mundane, boring world. The great Johnson Campbell. They have a way to please and escape is to prevent the game from becoming a routine. So often games become a routine. You have standard operating procedure for approaching a door. No, not with escapists. To make them approach each door differently. Make each door different if you're doing a dungeon bash. For well, whatever reason you've decided on that. Make things different. Things are unusual. This dungeon is different from that dungeon. This town is different from that town. This one floats on a bed of lava. This one flies through the air. This one is buried in caves. This one is invisible to the outside world and is only able to be approached if you know the right command words. Make your mate make your places and locations and the people they meet fantastic and you'll keep the escapist happy. And other things an escapist doesn't really care about. They don't care what sort of adventure they're on. The plot's not so much important to them. They want it to be weird, unusual and interesting. They are there to escape from reality, not to have another job. The next type of player is the explorer. They want to know everything about you. They want to explore it. I think that's why I call them the explorer. They want to know why things are happening. Why are there orcs in the hills? Why are they raiding the human settlements? What is causing them to mo to do that? What motivates them? Are they being driven by an even worse force, like the Huns were? The Huns were driven out from their lands and started attacking the Romans. Maybe the orcs are like that. What is making everything do everything? They want to know what's going on. They're interested in the whys and the wherefores. These players really enjoy mysteries, puzzles, enigmas. They like to find out what is going on. So to keep an explorer interested in your game, you must have lots of whys and wherefores, causes and effects. Rather different from the escapist. It doesn't really interest in that. They just are amazed by the strangeness of it all. But an explorer, they will want to know why. Next, we have the killer, or rather simple player. They just want to know one thing, where they are. To quote Fast Quiz from Aliens. She didn't care about the company and that had its fingers in every pie. She wasn't interested in the alien's biology or really where the colonists are going from. She wanted to kill the bugs. And there are players who want to do that. They've had a bad day at work. They've had a rotten day at home. They want something to kick. They want to kick butt, take names. So these players want monsters. Not everyone's a killer 24-7 or every time, but... Sometimes the players just want to hurt stuff. So if you can provide a lot of enemies for them to kill, that will make them happy. Next we have the role player. The one who is interested in their story. It is about them. They are the stars of their own tale. And they don't necessarily have the most tragic, horrible backstory ever. A lot of them do. And it does explain why they're wandering through the jungle, dodging the venomous land squids for Her Majesty. They, unlike the explorer, have a, have a landscape in their own mind. They are there for a reason. They are there for a purpose. They are there to do something to advance their plot. So that is a godsend if you're a game master, because they are giving the plot to you. 
They're the ones telling you what to, what needs to be done, what they would like to see. The other player types, it's often a mystery what to include. What, you uh, just throw stuff at the wall and hope some of it sticks. The role player, you will get the stuff from them. They will tell you what they want. And they will let you know, and if you put it in there for them, they will love you for it. The next type is the simulator. They like to get everything right. Every detail, every nuance, every piece likes to be in place. This is a much more old school game, gamer. You see these in the resource management games like AD&D, games of that era, where everything was counted and tracked, where you worry about encumbrance and how heavy things are. They are also more interested in the social positions. If one of the characters is a noble, they will react as if they are a noble. Or if they're a peasant, they will kick them on the ground and keep them in the mud. Because that is where peasants should be. They will not challenge the system. They will not overthrow it. But they will revel in it. They will enjoy being part of the brutality inherent in the feudal system. Or the brutality inherent in the capitalist system. Or whatever system your game happens to have. They are more interested in knowing what they can do what they have, what they can show off, their knowledge, their expertise in knowing how an historical event works, how, what moves their character does. They are more interested in knowing that it is a Fokakata defense, not just my parry. So, coming up with the details really pleases a simulationist. And then we have the comedians. Not everyone can be funny. And bringing the funny is often a very hard thing. After all, tragedy is very easy. Someone only has to die. Comedy is hard. But every now and then you find players who can bring the funny. They can change the mood, bring a bit of lighthearted relief when it's needed, tell a joke. And then you have the others who think that every line should be from Monty Python or The Princess Bride or someone else. And, well, there are times for games like that. But other times you want your, you want your serotonin. You should tell your com comedians or aspiring comedians, people who just think they're funny, maybe now is not the time for a constant joke fest. They want a constant joke fest, we can run some paranoia tune. And then we can let everything, just the cream pies and the laser guns and the slapstick fly. It's best to try and keep... Pa comedians down, because, well, they can just turn your entire game into a farce. But sometimes you need that comedy. And then, second worst character type, the munchkin. They want loot. They want stuff. They want more stuff than anyone else. Whoever dies with the most toys wins. And, yeah, these games are pretty horrible. They're yeah, just there to amass the stuff. Leveling up is only really a function of getting more stuff. That's all they care about. If you have a munchkin, you know, try to evolve them. Try to get them interested in doing something else. Find, find out what that other key is. Are they simulationist? Do they want to simulate things? Or do they, can you push them into role-playing? Tell them. Describe your character. Describe this thing. Describe why you want all this loot. Why do you want all this stuff? You must have a reason. Beyond greed. Or maybe you just have greed. But even a munchkin normally doesn't even have that as a motivation. They're not. It is greed because they've seen that in video games. And that's what they do. That's what they think role playing games are. So yeah, try and involve them away. Try to develop them into something else. Find out what they want. Or do they just want the fantastic? Do they? Are they just interested in having all this loot? Because that is a fantasy of theirs. That is okay in itself. I mean, we call them fantasy role-playing games for a reason. It is to enact fantasies. It's their fantasy too. So munchkins are really simple and easy to please. It is quantity over quality. You can just give them vast amounts of what is in your game probably worthless stuff. They'll be happy. And hopefully they'll evolve. But if not, just Keep the quantity. Don't worry about the quality. Lastly, 
the worst type, the hanger-on. This is your boyfriend, the wife, or the sister, or the sister, or the flatmate who just has to be there. And well, they've joined in because it's slightly more interesting. They're just sitting around twiddling their thumbs watching. And, and these players are just horrible. Usually they don't want to be there. They would wish you were doing something else. They can be disrupt. They won't learn the rules. And there's no point in trying to teach them rules. There, that is impossible. You will go mad doing it. You will lose more sanity trying to teach the hanger on the rules than if you walked up to Cthulhu and said, "Hey, what's up?" and then went mad. For that will trying to teach the hanger on rules is just impossible. The best thing you can do with them is set fire to them. No, you shouldn't set fire to people. That is wrong. That is wrong. That is very wrong. But what you should do is try and find something else for them to do. <laughs> Point them towards the video game in the room, the television in the room. Anything you do not want hangers on. They are the worst. <laughs> and that is a summary of some of the types of gamers I have run into. And my thoughts. And I should tell your game to them. Thank you.